Hi everyone, this is Dan Gross for News 8 and RochesterFirst.com. Welcome to What's Good, the place where we share the good news, and at least in today's case, the highlights from the past 14 days. Let's cue the jam. The Seneca Park Zoo has another member, this one another baby giraffe. The newest giraffe is the first calf of Capenzi, one of the zoo's two female giraffes. The other, Iggy, gave birth to a male named Olmsted earlier this year. So yes, this new giraffe is the second born at the zoo since April, following the first ever Maasai giraffe born at the zoo. And there's always a Rochester connection, even to these images from the James Webb Telescope. L3 Harris worked to integrate systems and test them as well for the James Webb Telescope. These images are revealing the origins of the universe. So to celebrate, L3 Harris hosted a watch party as those images came in. James Webb was launched on Christmas last year, and its mission to show the farthest images humanity has ever seen in terms of time and distance. The Cornhill Arts Festival made its return to Rochester. The two-day festival featured local and touring artists, vendors, local food, live music, and more. The last time the festival was held, was in 2019. If you drove down the 800 block of Portland Avenue Monday afternoon, you might have seen a cookout, a DJ, Rochester police, and the community all having a street party in front of Andre's Barbershop. Andre and Rochester Barbers gave free haircuts to kids, to kids ages 7 through 17. Andre says this is his duty as a community member, describes it as an anti-violence initiative, and it gave kids mentorship, a clean cut, and of course, some fun. The City of Rochester is starting a new citywide project called the Health and Wellness Initiative. Part of it, the Mayor's Office and City Council say they will work together to, quote, define the health and wellness needs of Rochester's most underserved communities. City Council says it's part of the budget, a priority for city government, and said so many needs of the citizens in Rochester still need to be addressed. And less than two weeks ago, Rochester firefighters were able to save a man's home on Crossfield Road after an attic fire broke out around 10 p.m. that evening. This was in part due to some newly graduated crew members who, this is true, were responding to their first ever call. That's Greg Ryan and Chris Shea. Both men had just graduated just two days before this call. Gentlemen, fantastic work. In the words of Ali Peters, video games are often played in the comfort of one's basement. But what if you could enjoy them anywhere? That's why this one Gates man named James Bunn created the video gaming truck. It can come right to you. It's been in business for a couple of years now, inspired by time with his kids. It's air conditioned with over 250 games available to play, including this dance game that Ali's clearly crushing right now. Up to 20 people can game at a time in and outside the truck. July is Pride Month for Rochester, and to celebrate both the city and county held Pride flag raising ceremony, ceremonies rather, to commemorate the month. One was in MLK Park, the other in front of the county building. People were out celebrating the 4th of July in 19th century style at the Genesee Country Village and Museum. One of the biggest highlights of the festivities, the return of the naturalization ceremony. There, 50 people from 28 countries were naturalized, meaning they became U.S. citizens. The Patriot Guard was at Heroes Brewing over the weekend to present a celebration of life plaque to the family of Lieutenant Mildred Ellis. She served as a nurse in Japan and passed away of Alzheimer's disease. Now, Heroes Brewing is honoring her with a new American Pale Ale. All the proceeds, or part of the proceeds, are going to the Rochester Finger Lakes chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. This beer can actually features letters that she wrote home to her parents and family during her deployment. Mayor Evans, along with Rochester city officials, unveiled this newly renovated Frederick Douglass Art Center at a ribbon cutting ceremony. There, they said the renovations included upgrades to the center's kitchen, the game room, gymnasium, a new music system, as well as what you're seeing right now, this new entrance and signage. They say these upgrades also help improve accessibility. They say that these renovations were funded through Rochester School's modernization program. What else is good? Rebuilding with community help is good. The owners of Hollerhorn Distillery announced they have set a reopening date. This after a large fire destroyed most of their business this past May. The owner says that the community has pitched in to help replace things like the foundation, framing, 
and more. He hopes that Hollerhorn will be distilling soon, and on a special date they're planning their reopening, May 12th of next year, the one year anniversary of the fire. What else is good? Celebrating trees is good. Cornell Cooperative Extension of Monroe County, in partnership with the city's forestry department, hosted a guided tree walk over a weekend. It took place at First Street Park in the Market View Heights neighborhood, where participants walked around Bay Street, over to 8th and then down Central Park. The goal? To teach about the importance of trees, their function as part of the natural ecology and wellness of the community. What else is good? Your good news. Whatever it is, if it puts a smile on your face, the team and I would love to hear from you. You can drop me a line personally. My email should be on screen right about whew. now. That's dgross at wrctv.com. And to help us tell the story, please pass along any photos or video you might have as well. Well, I think that just about does it for this week's What's Good. My name is Dan Gross. Thank you so much for your time and company today. Really appreciate it. You know what's going to be good? The rest of your week. We'll see you next Wednesday.